Rebecca moves to Collingswood, New Jersey to be closer to school, she puts considerable distance between herself and her boyfriend Johnny. Still, the two are able to stay in touch via webcam. Together, they discover that the house Rebecca is now living in has a dark history, a history that's about to repeat itself. I first discovered the Collingswood story back in the early 2000s, and I was incredibly impressed. Though the film would be classified as found footage, a subgenre that, even at that time, was feeling pretty played out. The Collingswood story still felt ahead of its time. And that's because writer and director Mike Costanza approached found footage from a different perspective. The Collingswood story is told entirely through a series of online video chats. Long before the den, unfriended, and searching used webcams as a narrative device, there was the Collingswood story. But this movie is far more than just a gimmick. It's a testament to less is more, and proof positive that a strong story, good actors, and steady direction are the key ingredients to a standout horror film, not a multi-million dollar budget. Stephanie Dees and Johnny Burton carry the movie like champs. Their characters are likable, and their performances feel natural. At times, I honestly felt like some kind of sick peeping Tom, having somehow hacked in on their private video chats. You get the feeling that their relationship has been a little rocky, and that this move on Rebecca's part wasn't just to be closer to school. None of this is mentioned in the film. It's the subtlety of their performances, little glances and pregnant pauses that speak louder than words. Costanza is able to do a lot here with a little. He slowly builds tension throughout the first two-thirds of the film before finally letting it all hang out in the final act. Costanza is able to create a real sense of unease and an overall creepy atmosphere throughout. The Collingswood story is also something of a time capsule when it comes to the early days of people communicating with each other online. Dial-up sucked, yes, but it brings back a lot of good memories. The Collingswood story isn't perfect and it does stumble a bit toward the end, but the positives far outweigh the negatives here. The Collingswood story is a rock-solid little thriller that deserves your time and attention. I can't recommend it any higher. As for this new Blu-ray release from Cauldron Films, the film is remastered from the original source tapes by writer-director Mike Costanza. I'd give the picture quality and the sound quality both a solid 4 out of 5 for this release. The Collingswood story both looked and sounded fantastic on this new Blu-ray release from Cauldron Films. As far as the limited edition packaging for this release, I really dig it. First, I love the colors, the greens and purples and blues, and what they've done with the skull on the computer screen is also very nice. A super cool design for the slipcase by Sister Hyde Design. The title and the tagline are embossed on the front, and the words and cauldron logo are embossed on the back of the slip. Here's the Blu-ray case. The back of the case features the plot synopsis as well as the special features. This is an all-region release, so fear not if you live in a region abroad because this Blu-ray will play in your Blu-ray player. There is the Blu-ray. The sleeve is reversible. This release also comes with two double-sided lobby cards. As far as extras are concerned, we have Behind the Story. It's 14 minutes and two seconds in length, in which writer and director Mike Costanza discusses his background in short films and music videos. He discusses casting the Collingswood story, researching a real series of murders that inspired the story, the idea of combining technology with a horror film, working with limited resources. He discusses the positive response the film received from critics and during film festivals, and more. Next, we have an interview with Stephanie Dees from the 2005 Fearless Tales Film Festival. It's five minutes and one second in length. Ms. Dees discusses getting cast in the Collingswood story, her role in Halloween 4 as one of the kids who teases Danielle Harris. She discusses the guerrilla approach that was taken to make the film and more. Next, we have a 2006 interview with John Burton and Grant Edmonds. It's 10 minutes and 20 seconds in length. They discuss the story of the Collingswood story, how they were cast in the film, working with Michael Costanza, their favorite parts of the film, and more. We get a trailer and an audio commentary with director Mike Costanza. This is a very nice Blu-ray release for the Collingswood story from the fine folks over at Cauldron Films. Both the picture quality and the sound quality were fantastic, and we get some nice extras as well. If you've not seen The Collingswood Story, again, I highly recommend it. If you are a fan of the film, then you definitely want to look into picking up this Blu-ray and adding it to your collection. I'll post a link to this release's listing over on Diabolic DVD in the description. Go over, 
and check it out. If you've seen the Collingswood story, please let me know your thoughts on the film down in the comments section below. If you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up and share it on social media. If you're not following me on social media, those links are in the description. As always, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care, and until next time, peace. A huge shout out to all my patrons and channel members. I appreciate your generosity and support of my channel. Become a patron today and join me for exclusive live streams, get early access to videos, and have a say in what movies I review on my channel. Become a channel member and get access to exclusive badges and emotes to use when I stream. Links are in the description. Say hello to the internet, Jeremy. Hello to the internet.